it's, so it's early June 2020. Um, if, if, you're seeing, if, you're, if you're hearing this message, seeing this message, then I am already dead, along with the rest of the world. So hello, hello aliens. Democracy is also dead. Um, that was the first casualty. Um, I, a lot's been on my mind, you know? I have a, um, I have a godson, and he lives right across the street. I can see his house. And, um, since coronavirus happened, I have not been able to hold him. He's the son of my best friend. And, you know, I've, we've sort of done a Romeo and Juliet balcony kind of situation where she dangles the baby and I offer him sonnets um, and words of love. But in addition, um, he, my godson is a, is a person of color. And I've been thinking really nonstop about him and about the world that he's going to have to grow up in. And the fact that it's different from the world of my own children, who are not people of color. Um, you know, educating my children in this environment has been um, extraordinarily challenging because, for the most part, I'm their only reference point. That's not healthy. The, 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 the world of information should not come from a single source. It should come from many, many, many sources that eventually help you to think critically. And I think your parents are always the source that you uh, think critically about. Um, but I am doing my best, and I am thinking of my children, and I'm thinking of my godchild, and the responsibility that I have to them. Um, and in that, you know, trying to get at least my eldest daughter to try to get her to, to her to engage, for her to ask the questions. If I just sit down and, you know, I need to tell her about, okay, these, these are the things that are happening and they're bad and scary and dangerous and also, it's up to you to change them. Like that, you know, it's not really helpful for a, a young, a very young child. But when she gets to see demonstrations and when she gets to go to participate in them, and when she understands that, you know, we clap for the medical workers at seven, we, we take a knee in solidarity with Black Lives Matter, then she does start to engage. Um, so music's not been on my mind. Music, I've, I've played guitar my whole life, I'll always play guitar. And I've had a very, very long career. And I've got to, I'm very lucky, I'm very fortunate. I've got to see the world, um, live, live as a musician. I'm not worried about myself. But I am worried about every, I'm worried about everyone around me. Um, So no, I guess music is not playing the kind of role that maybe it traditionally would in my life because um, I'm not seeking personal comfort. Normally, normally when I listen to music or when I play music, when I write music, it's all sort of like my own thing, and I need it for myself, and I need to feel better or you know emote. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. I'm somehow just not worried about me right now, which I think is a relief, but music's always there in the background, we're always listening, it shapes our world, it shapes our lives, whether I, you know, care for it to or not, and I respect it, and I honor the people who are out there busting ass on their webcams, and on Instagram, and on, you know, for, who are entertaining the world completely for free right now. Um, I probably should have a duty to be part of that process as well. And those are my thoughts on this day. It's a hard day. Um, but I have, you know, I do have hope.
much like the stark awareness that the work was not at all complete when Trump was elected, which I think the outcome would have been very different if we'd had a, a female president. I think we would have, you know, kicked back and gone together. First African American president, first female president, great, we've solved it. And I think that maybe, not that I would wish a Trump on any anybody, or you know, this is a nightmare, a living hell. Um, I do see in what's happening in this, the conversations around the coming election, and what's happened to so many black people who have been killed unarmed by the police, that it's a, it's like another, well, you know, Black Lives Matter sort of predated me too, I believe, but, you know, the energy and the awareness that has been brought um, to these issues is not something that I think would have happened had we had a different kind of leadership. And then, you know, perhaps a leadership that could have, you know, said, okay, we're all in this together, it's going to be okay, a, pa a sort of, you know, make us more passive and make us feel like we're one. But, you know, there are, like, white, semi-conservative parents out there who are, like, fed up, and they're saying, Black Lives Matter. And I'm buying that t-shirt, and I'm putting it on my three-year-old, and I am marching, and I'm protesting, and chanting, and I am you know, donating and I'm, I'm going to go vote. And I think that um, as hard as it is to look at thing, look at reality sometimes, I think as artists like, ooh, we make a reality. Well, you know, that's not true. Um, we have a, you know, subjective sense of you know, the, 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 the sort of swirling chaos, but truth is truth. So I think that what gives me hope is all is, is seeing a lot of people that I'd never had seen before make statements. I mean, look, I get that Facebook likes don't do anything, but they do sometimes occasionally show people's humanity. Um, you know, June is is Pride Month. It's traditionally like you know a time when the, the corporations all turn gay and tell you to buy your stuff because, you know, we love your gay nephew. We've always been so open. And, you know, most people see right through that and I think that, you know, this pride is gonna be dedicated to solidarity with our black and brown brothers and sisters. Um, and as a gay person, I'm quite used to protesting for my rights and now it's time that we all took a moment to give back um, and so that's, that's where I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful in seeing people who normally would be like, don't you want to party? Don't you want to ignore this? Don't you want to look away? Going, there's no looking away. And, um, the fascist rapist in the White House has to be removed. And the people on the margins of society have to, be, have to be protected. Um, and it has to be white people doing the really hard work of understanding that, you know, we we are we live in a racist society. We are preconditioned to, you know, have beliefs and assumptions that, as good in our heart that we think we are, we, we if we keep denying it, we're never going to get better. Um, and I'm I don't know I'm I'm. I am hopeful because of these things, because of these hard, hard truths people are suddenly somehow able to swallow and speak out against. You guys should vote.